AN4H and H here. Just worked a guy in, in Canada, in London, Ontario, um, on this repeater, 10 meter repeater, uh, 29640. Um, and uh, I actually wound up talking to the owner of the repeater, Victor Echo 3, Mike Mike X ray. There's the repeater. So this is uh, it's 10 o'clock at night in the east on August 19th. Nice to see Cycle 25 cooperating with us, and it should just get better. Uh, this repeater I heard earlier, it's in New York, um, and I heard some QSOs going on. And it, it, at times, when I was in my truck, I was mobile. Uh, it was pushing the meter on the FT891 over 40, 40 dB over S9. Um, it, it's there's a lot of fading. The, the band's not settled, but it's good to hear some activity. Uh, let me see if I can get in there. Uh, this one. N4 H and H Atlanta. Oh, switch antennas. This one's coming in better off my doublet. The other repeater, oddly enough, was coming in better off the ZS6 BKW. This is N4 H and H Atlanta, Georgia. Nice courtesy tone. Obviously, you can tell I'm using my FTDX 5000 MP. I shot a video recently about how you access the memory groups and then the uh, memories with the, the various memory channels within those groups. Um, and that's what I'm doing here. If I rotate my VFOB right now, it's changing the memories. And I've got the, the basic four frequencies in there for uh, FM 10 meter repeaters. And there's a separate video that shows you how to set the offset, the tone on this radio. Uh, because some of these repeaters don't use a 100 hertz tone. That is very popular, the 100 hertz tone. Now, I don't think the band's open to Texas because usually this frequency here is the Dallas-Fort Worth uh, repeater, which is a powerhouse too. But I don't think we have an opening in that direction. But we've definitely got an opening towards the northeast. You know, there's the one from Canada. And, uh, nice guys. I got. I worked them a while ago. And then this is the one in New York, which I don't seem to be getting any takers. This is N four H N H Atlanta, Georgia. Anyone around? <coughs> now see that time I didn't hit. See what I mean, though, the fading? And for H and H, clear. <coughs> I was just checking the other antenna. So it's definitely coming in better on the doublet. And that's the 160 meter doublet. Works very well up at this uh, frequency. And you've probably seen the videos about that. If you've been on the channel a while, you've seen those videos. Uh, because uh, earlier in the year, I had, <clears throat> I had to uh, do some repairs on my antennas. I had to change the ballon out for the doublet. <clears throat> so uh, I had to, uh, my tuner went out. So I'm using the internal tuner in the amplifier, which is working great. So I don't even care to get my other tuner, my other auto tuner fixed. And <clears throat> the auto tuner had a ballon in it. So now that I'm switched over to using the amplifier, I needed to uh, use an external ballon. So if you're interested in seeing all that, I went, uh, there's a video where I was experimenting with a couple of different ballons and uh, you know, it's up there. Let me pan over there. So there's the amp. The yeah. That's the Elecraft KPA 1500, and the ballon is up there. You see it right above that light. The ladder line comes in right, right through the top of that window and then connects to the ballon, and that's a, a nine-foot piece of uh, LMR 400 coming over to the back of the amplifier. So that's the setup. 
That's what I settled on after all that experimenting earlier in the year. Okay, well, so I just wanted you to hear some FM repeater action. Looks like this one here is more reliable right now, the one out of uh, uh, London, Ontario. And this is just going to get better with cycle 25 as it continues to move toward its peak. Remember, these sunspot cycles are approximately 11 years. And so during the first half, we're conditions will be getting better and better and better, then it'll peak out. And um, that peak point is, oops, wrong volume. There we go. That peak point will be the where we've got, get, we're getting the best propagation um, with the F layer. At night, the F1 and F2 layers of the ionosphere combine, and um, they'll give us the, the best distance. Remember, during the daytime, it's the D layer. And during the daytime, it tends to absorb signals. Um, if you've got a low, uh, excuse me, a high enough a uh, angle of radiation, say on 40 meters, you know, 100 watts or more, you can punch through that and generally make it to the E layer and get a little more distance. Um, or get, you know, get, get some regional coverage, and which is pretty, pretty regular on 40 meters. It's during cycle 24, it was the, the saving grace, 40 meters. It worked day and night most of the time. I would say 98% of the time. So, uh, but at night here, the, you know, the, the D layer is out of the picture. The E layer dissolves, kind of diminishes, um, right around sunset, you know, the, uh, what we call the gray line, you know, uh, you can do some pretty good, um, you know, quick DX during the, during the gray line pop, pop, uh, propagation. Now that'll be, uh, dusk and dawn. It repeats at dawn. So you got dusk and dawn. And then, um, but after that, it's SF layer. And the F1 and F2 combine. And so you're, you know, you're bouncing your signal, refracting it from, you know, between 125 and 250 miles above the surface. So you get some pretty good distance at night with that. And so when 10 meters is open like this, I mean, here it is, you know, 10 o'clock at night. Um, much fun can be had, and it should just be getting better and better as time goes on. Okay, well, this wasn't a propagation video, but I just wanted to throw that in a little bit as far as, you know, what's going on here tonight. You have to enjoy these times when you can. I'm just hoping that we'll see more and more of this type of activity, and the signals will get even more solid. Okay, hey, thanks for watching the video. Shout out to the Patreon team who support this channel and bring these videos to you. Um, if you want to join that team and help support the channel, if you like this type of content, that's a good way to vote yes. Uh, go to www.patreon.com forward slash N4HNH. I'll put it at the bottom of the screen. And, uh, of course, you can also help the channel by uh, clicking the thumbs up. Smash that thumbs up button and uh, subscribe to the channel. And if you do subscribe, be sure to click the notification bell and you'll be notified when I upload the next video generally one to two a week. And, um, and then hey, consider sharing a link to this video on social media or with a friend via email or text, um, that sort of thing, so you can help out others. Uh, become an Elmer. You know, you, you don't have to be an expert to be an Elmer. Uh, you can just share what you do know. That's what I'm doing. So uh, the more we share, the more others learn, and uh, that's what the amateur radio community is all about is, is learning. And uh, you may know this by now. If you're new, maybe not. But a lot of the innovations in radio technology uh, came about because of amateur radio. Okay? So, uh, hey, thanks for watching the video. And 73 from N4 H&H. &H.